Does God always tell the truth? Welcome to Bible on the Go with Dr. Dan. You know, I was searching around in the Net Bible, and I found this great verse in one of Paul's epistles. It's a short book packed with useful content. It's in Titus chapter 1, verse 2, the, the second verse of the book after Paul gives his standard greeting, says this, in hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before time began. Wow, what a glorious statement. We already presume that God didn't lie. No, you rarely hear anybody say, hey, the, how many times has God told the truth? He tells the truth all the time. Okay, but here's the thing. It's just powerful the way it's stated. In hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before time began. Here Paul makes a sound truth about the gospel. There's eternality in it, in hope of eternal life. Every believer has that second part of the good news built into his soul. It comes with the confession of sin and trust in Christ, Romans 10, 9, 10, for example. Okay, so the first thing is the eternality and hope of eternal life. And then the second one, which is the point of this, of this video, is God's truthfulness 100% of the time. For all eternity, past, present, future, that which was, that which is, and that which is to come, he's dependable. He was always going to be whatever he says, you can count on it, right? So, I was excited about it, of course, as you can tell. I searched the phrase. I was like, let's see how many times this is in the Bible. So, I searched it. it, it it's only in there once. It's just, it's just, it's just in that one place. So when that happens, of course, you can look at the, at the uh, small little letters uh, that are cross-references directly to that verse. And I looked at them, and I looked over them, and doing it electronically is fantastic, so I could do it pretty quickly. And I found two more that reference this idea, and I wanted to share along with this one. The next one is in the Old Testament. It's in, of all places, Numbers. Uh, chapter 23, verse 19. God is, you might remember this one because this has been quoted a lot. God is not a man that he should lie. Okay, so now we know who the real liars are, right? Mankind, fallen humanity, right? God is not a man that he should lie, nor a human being that he should change his mind. Has he said and will he not do it? Woo! There's faith there, right? Because he, he said it, it's going to come to pass right? Or has he spoken and will he not make it happen, right? So in other words, just kind of flipped in a, in a antithetical way, right? So that's great in the Old Testament there in Numbers 23, 19. And the last one's not going to disappoint at all because it's in the great book of Hebrews, Hebrews 6, 18. So that we who have found refuge in him, oh, glory to his name, right? Woo! Okay, so Praising, right? Because because that we have found refuge in him. What a connection. That relationship may find strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us through two unchangeable things. He's referencing blessing and the promise to multiply I mentioned back in verse 13, right? But it, let me finish the verse. It says to hold fast to the hope set before us through two unchangeable things since it is impossible for God to lie. Well, how about that? He always tells the truth. He has never lied. And he's not a man that he should lie, as it says in Numbers. Why? Because it's impossible for God to lie. All truth is found in him. And Reminds us of when Jesus walked the earth as, as the expression of God, as the very, very man of very man, and fully God of fully God. And he said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. What a powerful, powerful thing it is impossible 
for God to lie. Thanks for watching. Bible on the go, Dr. Dan. If you like these videos, the best thing you can do is hit that button called subscribe. It doesn't cost a thing, and you only have to do it once. <laughs>